we've had uh, uh, two days of intense discussions as it relates to solidifying our roadmap in respect of our geothermal development here on St. Kitts Nevis with particular focus on the development on St. Kitts. We are happy that we were joined by our colleagues from within the region. I have with me uh, Ambassador Vince, who is a friend of St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, he is from the Nature Isle of Dominica, and we are aware that Dominica has taken this road to its own geothermal development uh, since 1969, believe it or not. But, uh, we also have with us our partner from Telenov, Jacques Shiraki, uh, who is here. And when we decided to move forward with our own geothermal development, because you would be aware that St. Kitts and Nevis are uh, two islands, one paradise, but with two volcanoes. In Nevis, the resource may have been already established on the Nevis, but we thought as a government it would be irresponsible if we do not establish whether there is a resource on St. Kitts and determine how to develop that resource once established without retarding the progress on Nevis. We have so far done the 3G studies, the geological, geophysical and geochemical studies on St. Kitts or the surface studies as, as it's referred to. The indications thus far have indicated that there is a potential on St. Kitts to develop at least 18 to 36 megawatts of geothermal power. And that's heartening for us here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Obviously, the next step is to consider the way forward for our slim hole drilling, slim hole and exploration drilling, I should add. And going forward, we in the interim have received a draft geothermal agreement from our partners. We as a cabinet decided that we should get an independent review of that particular agreement. So we went to our partners within the CDB and we thank people like Tessa Robertson and her colleague who is here, uh, uh, Joseph uh, from the CDB Energy Unit and of course another friend of St. Kitts who is here in Dr. Devon Gardner and he's no stranger to St. Kitts Davis. So we got an input from CARICOM and we got an input uh, from the CDB going forward. Where we are right now uh, in terms of the, the next steps, uh, next set of actions and timelines, we have agreed today that we would restructure the geothermal agreement and we have put a timeline on that to be completed by the end of June this year. We also have agreement in terms of the provision of a business plan and financial model uh, from uh, Terranov. We would, in terms of the joint venture company arrangements, uh, consider the shareholder agreement issues that the decision making and the, the 
the commercial issues, uh, key business points in uh, so, some reform. And of course, we deal, dealt with and agreed upon the way forward as it relates to e exclusivity in terms of the development of this resource and sink it. And more importantly, <coughs> uh, the equity participation within the, the JVC. So we thought that we would again have this, this, these discussions because we have to bear in mind that uh, government going into this, this agreement owns the land, uh, government owns the utility called Skellig, and government will own the resource as well uh, once proven. And government as well through Skellig would be the off taker. So we thought that we would have this independent review because more importantly for us is the to ensure that we protect the best public interest. Because at the end of the day, once we, we, we provide this, this uh, uh, energy, there must be some benefit, a real benefit for the consumers or the end consumer. Because it's our government position our government's position that every single citizen in this country must have access to affordable electricity irrespective of their status within the community. Yeah, well, uh, it was a, an interesting uh, one-day meeting where we had a chance to cover all the various issues within the, the progress of the geothermal exploration and the future development of the project. As the minister mentioned, uh, we have now a good confidence of uh, a geothermal resource on the island, and we need to go one step further, which is uh, to organize the exploratory drilling to uh, completely uh, assess the resource and uh, the commercial viability of this geothermal resource. So this is what we have been working on today uh, with the support of uh, friends and colleagues that have already a long-term experience in the geothermal in the Caribbean. And uh, it was a quite fruitful meeting, and uh, as the minister mentioned, we, we hope to finalize uh, the complete geothermal agreement by uh, June 2017. So hopefully we can start the exploratory drilling by December 2017. So this is where we are now, and uh, hopefully is, uh, is everything is fine, and if we don't encounter any uh, unexpected uh, hurricane or whatever that uh, sometimes happen in our countries, um, we should be able by 2020 to have a, a clear understanding and of a geothermal power plant on St. Kitts. Well, the, the first and major impact is uh, complete uh, environment-friendly uh, energy production uh, without any pollution. So it's, uh, it's already a, a great step toward the environment. And uh, as you know, uh, the climate change is a real issue for our islands. So to contribute one part to the, <coughs> the improvement of our environment is a very important issue. Um, economically, uh, a geothermal power plant would uh, save uh, about 15 million US dollars per year, uh, or generate 15 million dollars a year in savings on the fossil fuel consumption uh, because geothermal energy is cheaper than fossil fuel energy. So economically, it's good for the government. And at the end of the day, it's also good for the end user. And so all the people living on Sankit because it will reduce the cost of electricity and it will, more important, stabilize the energy production and allow for future developments on the island. So yes, geothermal is a, is a, is a, is a blessing for an island when you have a volcano uh, and you have some volcanoes on St. Kitts. Uh, some people say it's a nightmare, but some others uh, uh, can look at it the right way, and geothermal is a blessing, yes. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank Minister Leibert for inviting me on the behalf of my government, but also as a member of SIDSDOP and um, the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, together with um, the interim director, Dr. Albinger. I want to really take the opportunity to commend the initiative by Minister Leibold. He has shown great leadership by assembling a team of people who we feel can assist St. Kitts and Nevis in moving this project forward. Minister Leibold has become one of the leading ministers of energy in the region. He's been very active in participation 
at the various levels. And I, I, I really appreciate his support and the way that he has contributed to the process, not only in St. Kitts, of course, and Nevis, but within the Caribbean. So, Minister, I want to thank you for that. I think geothermal development can be an expensive, painstakingly long process. But with the right partners, with the government using the right approach, and the support of development partners can have tremendous benefits for people. And in our islands, as in the case of Dominica, we've been pursuing geothermal, as the minister said, since 1969. We had the first geothermal act passed in our parliament in 1974. And it is only in the 2000s that we started moving more closer to, to the realization of a geothermal power plant. Today, we are even closer, and we hope by the end of 2019, we will get power onto the grid at a much reduced rate from what we pay now for diesel generation. And of course, it's clean energy. And there are so many benefits that one can, can receive from geothermal energy. So I think it is something that the government of St. Kitts and Nevis needs to continue pursuing, and need to make the right decisions, and need to continue embracing the support of development partners in moving this process forward. So I, 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 am, I have no doubt that um, the right ingredients are present in this initiative. And with the leadership of Minister Libel, I have no doubt that we'll be able to see a, a progressive approach to geothermal development on the island of St. Kitts and redounding to the benefit of the people of your country. And that's the most important thing. And that's what he continues to highlight. And that is what's driving us as well in Dominica. At the end of the day, our people must get a better deal. They have to reduce the cost of electricity. Businesses can, can see a savings in, in their operations. And the benefits can trickle down to everybody in the country. And that, that is what I know is driving us in Dominica. And I, I know that's what's driving you here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Firstly, let me also echo my um, sentiments of thanks to the Honorable Minister. Um, incidentally, uh, last year, January, in um, Georgetown, Guyana, we had the 60th meeting of energy ministers. What we, well, we had the 60th meeting of the special quoted, which was a meeting of energy ministers. And uh, during that meeting, one of the agenda items which was endorsed by that meeting, which was incidentally chaired by Minister Lightburn, uh, uh, Lightburn, is um, the whole idea of um, pursuing um, a regional strategy on geothermal development in those countries where the resource exists. And so as a result of that, the CARICOM Secretariat has um, you know, built on the work that is uh, th that had been started by the CDB, uh, the CDB looking at um, issues related to de-risking the financing issues related to geothermal, and um, building also on the, some of the political work that has been done by the OECS Commission, decided to work on other aspects of um, building this regional partnership. Um, and the two areas that we have been focusing on is how we can significantly support what we refer to as transactions, um, meaning the issues related to contracting and agreements and policy and, um, and, and all the different pieces of, that are required for the deals to happen where geothermal is concerned. And um, we have also been working too at how we can share experiences and knowledge among those who are already making good progress with those who are not yet on the road to making as much progress who are who have may uh, be just starting as the case may be. And uh, so it was very, very instructive. Last year we also had in St. Kitts Minister in uh, May, you would recall, the uh, regional geothermal forum uh, that sought to share experiences among the countries developing uh, geothermal within CARICOM. And um, likewise, we have also had a number of other engagements through a number of working groups that have been meeting too in the margins of different meetings. And there has been a continued engagement of um, many stakeholders, including St. Kitts and Nevis being uh, one of the uh, members engaged um, in this uh, geothermal development as part of the regional strategy for sustainable energy. And it was um, extremely pleasing when uh, you know, we were invited uh, by Minister Lybird to provide support 
to St. Kitts with respect to its own geothermal development. And so the CARICOM Secretariat was very happy to identify modalities through which we could help to mobilize some of our partners and some of our member states who are developing geothermal and bring that experience to bear. We came in yesterday and we had St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica, who are the two more advanced countries, speaking of their experiences and helping the government of St. Kitts to understand some of the complex complexities that it will have to deal with and understand some of the lessons that they themselves learn so that uh, St. Kitts, in a sense, could have been um, three hours in that particular engagement and uh, perhaps 10 years of experience that those countries would have developed over the la in their own development process in the most recent times. And today we were able to meet in this larger forum with the developer and other stakeholders to kind of understand exactly now how we could bring that experience to move the St. Kitts agenda forward. And we believe that St. Kitts has taken an approach that is progressive and we will continue to support St. Kitts in that approach. And we believe that the geothermal resources in St. Kitts can help to make um, the energy situation in the country better. Um, the issue is that we have to ensure that it is done in a judicious way, that ensure that um, there is legal certainty for the investor. And of course, the developer here um, will bring be a testament to that. But more importantly, as um, Ambassador Anderson states, it must ensure that it brings about stable, low cost of energy to the country so that every single citizen can benefit because it's their resource. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a natural resource. And um, once you're dealing with natural resource, it means exploiting, in many instances, green fields. And when I say green fields, you're talking about and, uh, you're going into in, into territory which are sometimes nature reserves, sometimes very protected areas, and there are in most instances environmental concerns. And so, you know, we, let, let's not fool ourselves. Geothermal projects will always have an environmental footprint um, once you develop them, because it means there's going to be exploration work, drilling, construction work. Um, sometimes infrastructure has to be laid down to facilitate some of the movements that are required, the earth movements and the constructions that are required. So it's going to disrupt what exists in terms of a landscape. That is, that is, we have to be realistic and accept that as a fact. However, there are mechanisms through which we can ensure that we minimize the environmental and social disruptions that could be caused by any kind of um, project uh, related to geothermal development. And that is why very early in the process, uh, up front, an environmental and social impact assessment is one of the first things that you must be done. And in fact, today we spend quite a significant time, amount of time speaking about that exact issue and how we must begin to put together the arrangements to do such in St. Kitts. Because we must understand what are the environmental issues and social issues and considerations that we must factor in and mitigate and reduce as much as possible as we go about building this project. But you know, I have no, I have no hesitance in saying that the, the benefits um, has always proven to outweigh um, the, 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 the issues that could potentially arise once the project is done judiciously. And so, you know, selecting the right partner, having the right leaders, um, as we have here in Minister Library, driving the process and having um, the, the, the support of entities um, like the CDB who can help to move some of these um, uh, specific items that are necessary for the project to be done properly is important. Having also countries like Dominica providing their experience uh, is, is invaluable to the process. So, you know, those are, uh, that's probably the biggest um, hazard that one typically can, has to consider in developing a geothermal project, but it can be mitigated and, in a sense, minimized. Thanks again for the opportunity to make some comments. And um, first of all, I just want to thank the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, in particular, Minister Lybird for inviting Caribbean Development Bank to provide some insight into some of the resources that um, uh, are being mobilized by the bank to support the development and, um, and that can be mobilized in the future as we go forward. Um, in terms of my impression, I think, I think it, uh, it has been a good meeting and it falls in line with the approach that we have been promoting. One of partnerships, learning from experience, but also the model fits with uh, what we think is going to be uh, a useful approach. That is a public-private partnership. We believe that governments, uh, 
given their many constraints as small island states, won't be able to do these significant investments alone. You really need private sector investment, but it has to be done in a way that makes sense. Government has significant stake, they have the policy and you know, development strategy, but at the same time they need to uh, incorporate private um, input. So, so that PPP approach um, we think is a very important one, and that's the model that is being embarked on here. Um, so we're happy to have our head of public-private partnership from the bank being a part of the discussion, looking at some of the elements that need to be in place. Um, and so we were able to share um, some of the resources that we have, be we have begun to, to mobilize. Um, the nature of geothermal development is of such that for different stages of the development, the risks are different, and you need different kind of financing mechanism and resources. So for example, in the early stage exploration, you need government, you need grants to help because of the, the nature of the risk. And, and to the extent that government can tap some of these grants, these grants can be provided in the overall enterprise as, as government equity. Um, so, so those discussions, I think, uh, have been useful. <coughs> the bank has also been helpful, uh, I think. Well, we've been able to respond to a request from the government to, to provide some comments in terms of the discussion around the draft agreement from the standpoint of the structure and so on. Um, it was not a legal review per se, but to provide input that will allow for subsequent financing because important, it's important, I think, to get the approach, the structure, the model right because especially for development financing where you're using public monies, it's very important that certain things are in place, certain in terms of transparency, you know, integrity of the process. So, so some of those conversations I think were useful generally in, in, in terms of how, how we go forward. And we were happy to participate and provide whatever input that can help in that process. So this initiative we have called the GeoSmart Initiative, which is really about supporting all the countries in the Eastern Caribbean at any stage of the project development, about mobilizing resources to support them. We think we're, able, we're happy to be able to share some of what we're doing and how this could help benefit St. Kitts.